Hey guys, it's Garvin's Garage, and today we're doing the brakes on this 2016 Subaru Outback. And right now we're jacking it up on the front, on a front jack point. And you just need to look under the um, car and just find the jack point, which is right there. And then once you have it jacked up, we're going to show you where to put the jack stands. The first thing you want to do is jack up the car and put jack stands under it. And make sure it's on the pinch welds. The next thing you want to do is remove the wheels off the vehicle so you can access the brakes. The next thing you want to do is set the tires somewhere else away from the vehicle so you have room to work and then once you have the wheels off you can access the brake calipers pads and rotors and you want to make sure that you spray down everything with PB blaster because then all the bolts are easier to remove when you're when you come back to remove them and just get the top caliper bracket bolts and the caliper bolts and then what you want to do is turn the vehicle to left or right depending on which side you're working on to access the caliper bolts easier and then just buzz those off with an impact and then just set them to the side and then you want to remove the um, the screw holding on the brake line so then you can move the caliper more freely out of the way to access your brake pads And then once you have the caliper out of the way, which here we actually accidentally removed only the top bolt and we thought it would slide out of place, but actually you have to remove both caliper bolts. And then once you have the bottom caliper bolt removed, you can simply pull the pads out. We use a screwdriver to pry the pads out of place, but make sure you don't damage the rotor so you get so you can reuse it if it's not damaged. In our case, the brake pads weren't fully worn out, but we were told by the dealer that they were. So that's why we decided to replace the pads, but they didn't really need it. But it's always to be over maintenance. It's always good to have your vehicle over maintenance than under maintenance. Because if they did end up wearing out down to the metal, then the calipers, I mean the rotors wouldn't need to be replaced. Now we're putting in the new brake pads, which go in the opposite of the old ones. Just keep them on the same side. And then put anti-seize on the back of the brake pads to keep them from seizing up and keep them moving freely. And also to prevent vibration. Once you have anti-seize on both pads then you can remove the or just clean up the rubber sliding pins and re-grease them
now you can grab the caliper and start to put it back on but before that you got to make sure all of your hardware has anti-seize on it so the next person that maintains it has an easy time removing the hardware without worrying about it being rusted together right now we're clamping the caliper pistons back into the caliper so we can put it back on the brake pads back over the brake pads a channel locks that's like almost set to the max position is a great option but you can also use a c clamp with like a block of wood or something to push them back in there's multiple different options but it's hard to do both of them with a channel locks if they because they usually go back and forth like if you push one and the other one goes out but if you can get them both equal it's you can get them both back on and then once you get both pistons back into the caliper all the way then just slide the caliper back into where it's supposed to be And then just put all the hardware back in where it came out. So the caliper bolts and the caliper bracket bolts. You make sure to keep everything lubricated like the sliding where the brake pads slide on the caliper bracket. And also make sure to lubricate the sliding pins for the caliper. And... Just remember to anti-seize everything so it's easy to work on later down the road. And then once you have all the hardware back in, make sure your rotor is clean and torque everything down to spec, which I'm doing right here. And that'll help in the long run when you're using your brakes so that all the hardware doesn't fall out or so you don't over torque them and ruin threads and right here we're wiping down the caliper caliper no not caliper um rotor like i said before and then what you want to do is anti-seize the hub so then the wheel doesn't stick to the hub or of the caliper no i mean or the rotor so then it doesn't get stuck so you don't have to worry about taking it off later down the road it'll just come off easily and then hand tighten your lug nuts on and then buzz them on with an impact while the vehicle is still in the air And then remember to torque them down to a factory spec. You can find that in your owner's manual. And make sure you do it in a crisscross pattern. And now we're onto the rear brakes. First thing you want to do is jack it up from the rear trailer hitch because that was the easiest jack point that we could get to. And it's very and it's a very strong jack point. And then once you have it raised in the air so the tires are just barely off the ground. Make sure to put jack stands somewhere so the because using just the jack is never safe. We decided to put it on the rear f part of the frame because it was the easiest get easiest point to access. And now I'm just removing the rear wheels by buzzing them off with an impact.
and then you want to unscrew your caliper bolts which these ones are actually like a very different size that we struggle to get and they're almost as almost like a pin instead of a bolt that the um caliper slides on it's much different than the front Right here is where we struggled to find the correct size for the caliper bolt, but I think we ended up using a Torx bit, which is very weird for a Japanese vehicle. And then we ended up getting the like pin out, and it, as you can see, it's almost like a rod instead of like a bolt. And it's actually we used the T45 Torx bit, and then. Once we had that out, we took the rubber... Oh, and first off, there's a rubber cap that covers that bolt to keep dirt and grime from getting in there. So just pop those out before you unscrew it. And then... Um, and then just remove the caliper like we're going to do eventually. Now we're removing the, I would say these are called pins from the front of the caliper to help, to like allow you to take them off of the rear caliper bracket. And Subaru also has this very complex rear braking system that's like completely electronic for part of it for like emergency braking or adaptive cruise control. And that's also going to play a big role in how we maintenance the rear brakes. Because some people think that you need to take it into a dealer to have them electronically put it in a maintenance mode. But we actually came up with a idea to bypass that that idea and it's much more cost effective for people maintaining their Subarus at home. If you get your Rotor dirty at any time, just make sure to wipe it off with isopropyl alcohol so there's no residue left over because that can damage your brakes. And then once you have your caliper off the caliper bracket, take your brake pads out and replace them with the new brake pads. And then again, remember to put anti-seize on the back of them to prevent vibration. And the rears actually get worn down much more than the fronts on Subarus. Well, actually, it depends on how you drive, but if you're doing a lot of freeway driving, with the adaptive cruise control, it takes a lot of wear on the rear brakes because of the electronic system. And then also you want to lubricate your caliper sliding pins 
like I'm doing here, and we're just using marine grease just to keep them lubricated. And then we're anti-seizing the hub also to prevent the wheel getting stuck to the rotor from corrosion. And then the the electronic rear braking system that they have for like the adaptive cruise control and emergency stopping. There's a motor located on the caliper that has a wire connected to it and what you have to do is disconnect the wire and then remove two allen head screws to get the motor and gears off which will allow you to back the caliper um, piston back into the caliper because what it does is spins a shaft which um presses the brakes for you like electronically so what you have to do is remove the whole system that we're doing right here and then um and then we put the caliper or piston back into the caliper which spins the shaft and then you have to reinstall the whole motor and gear assembly for the rear brakes And we had no clue where to find this earlier on YouTube or anything, so we just went for it and we actually found out that it's a great idea to just remove the motor and the gear case. And then once you have it off, you can just push the piston back into the caliper with like a channel ox. Because there's only actually one piston instead of the front where there's two. So then you can push them back in. And then you can re-grease the inside of the, like where the spline is going to the motor and gears for the electronic braking. Grease it grease where the shaft enters the like gears and motor and then you can reinstall it and then just make sure to put the two allen heads back on and torque them down just so they're snug it's not really holding much power And then make sure to anti-seize all the hardware, like the, especially the two small Allen heads used to hold on the electronic motor for the electronic braking because those are really small and can get affected by corrosion. And then once you have those two bolts torqued down, you can reinstall the caliper.
And then you can put the caliper back on like I said before and just make sure it's put on correctly. And then you can start installing the like sliding caliper sliding pins which are threaded on with that T45 Torx bit. And make sure those have anti-seize on them too even though you grease them up just so they don't get corroded from the salty winters of Wisconsin. And then once you have the caliper back in place, make sure to plug in the wiring harness back into the electronic braking system. So then you actually have it used during adaptive cruise control and emergency braking. And then once you have those all put back in place, make sure to torque them down again. And then you can put your rubber covers back on so they don't get full of grease and grime. And then once you have the rubber back on, then you can put the actual caps back on that prevent dirt and grease from getting into those holes for the sliding pins. Make sure to grease inside those two so they keep the caliper moving freely on the rotor. And then if you end up getting your rotor dirty at all, make sure you do a complete rotation and in inspect it to make sure there's no dirt anywhere on the rotor and then make sure, and then just wipe it down with like isopropyl alcohol so there's no residue. And then you have to put the pin or whatever it's called back, I, I'd actually consider it mounting hardware, back onto the front of the caliper and it's very difficult to do and somehow I surprisingly got it on the first try but it actually takes a super long time to do because it's hard to push perfectly in the hole especially if the hardware isn't built correctly and then once you have it in the hole you can tap it in and I just used uh, channel locks because that's what I had near me but you can use anything but just make sure you don't bend the hardware so it functions properly and holds a caliper and brake pad in place. And then once you have that all done, then you can put your wheel back on and just put the lug nuts back on with a impact and then you can drop the vehicle down to its normal standard height and then you can torque them down to the recommended torque spec for your vehicle 
and then make sure you do it in a star pattern so you don't like warp the wheel or get any incorrect torque specs.